Hey, what's up everybody? Rob Marzullo here, Ram Studio Comics. Welcome back. So in today's video, I want to show you a little bit of uh, technique here for digitally painting. And I'm working on this Assassin's Creed uh, shot. Uh, it's probably from a 3D render, uh, at least the studying that I'm doing from uh, the shot from uh, the game or movie. I'm assuming the game. So, uh, so yeah, so essentially what I want to do here is focus on how to show you how to do some of the effects uh, inside of Procreate for digitally painting. So one of the things that I'll do is add new layers uh, set to multiply uh, for darkening. And so I'm using these different blending modes to kind of assist me in the process of building up the paintwork. So if I was to go back uh, to here and show you uh, without that last layer, uh, let me actually do it like this. So if you see from here to here to here, you know, kind of the workup process. And I should have did a few more stages. This uh, particular shot was about 45 minutes in. So I do this blocking in stage. And you can see it's, if I start to zoom in, it's really rough at this stage. Uh, and I actually did no drawing whatsoever uh, to the beginning of it. Uh, just blocked in some large shapes of color. And then I start to refine those and tighten those up. And it's still pretty loose, uh, but this is the process I take to refine it. So now what I'm at is just adding uh, individual layers um, with different blending modes. And after I get them the way I like, I'll tap on it, click Merge Down, and I'll keep working up the, uh, the artwork that way. And the thing I wanted to express when doing these types of painting, uh, you really want to do a lot of underpainting. And essentially what that is is a buildup of all the you know textures, colors, everything. Uh, let's go ahead and do another multiply one. I'll show you what I'm talking about. Let's take uh, a painting brush. We'll use the round brush modified that I use. And we're just going to go ahead and brush in some texture. Uh, so we're darkening up a little bit of areas. And the reason why I want to show you to use a little bit of blue is I think it's helpful for your underpainting if you get in the habit of always picking colors, not just dark and light, but also uh, shades of various colors. And you know, because what happens is everything, all these objects around you have lots and lots of different colors. Like I've talked about this before, if you're studying, uh, whether it be a 3D render, a photo you took, or uh, something you just grabbed off of uh, Google, whatever, you know, take the little color picker, like on this one, you ho hover your finger over it and you move around. And you can see these are all pretty much similar colors. You know, they're not too far off. Uh, which is why I need to incorporate more into it. Now, if you were to do that over an actual photo, you'd quickly see that there's a lot of different colors and variations that go into uh, real life and even even really well done 3D renders. So that's the that's the part where I think the underlying painting or the underpainting is so important to get as much of that information in as you can, as well as textures. So if you notice, I've got some gritty kind of texture starting to build up because this is supposed to be leather and leather's uh, got some particular flaws to it and things or, or grit and texture to it so you need to incorporate that for it to look uh, anywhere near realistic um, so let me get a little bit more of this in and you can really do this as well by mixing up your brushes so instead of always grabbing the same brush you can jump in here and grab uh, this one right here is kind of neat you know so we can try that you can see that immediately did a lot for it. Well, that's too much there, but you can play with the opacity here and obviously the brush size. But you can see just that little bit that it did actually enriched it quite a bit. So, you, t you know, the beauty of working with layers as well is you can apply each one of these effects, toggle it on and off, and really check your work. And then I suggest making as many edits as you can on that layer and then merging it down. Um, just me particularly because if you don't you're going to end up with a, a crazy absorbent amount of layers and it's going to get tricky to really see where you're at. Uh, now the other thing that you know we want to see a bit more brown in here we don't want too much blue but let's try a, a little bit more of an orangish brown something in here maybe uh, maybe a bit darker something in here let's try that uh, let's add a new layer and let's go ahead and set this one to more of a lighten so let's go to lighten and we can try screen or add or any of these effects but let's try lighten or wait add sorry um, and let's see what we get here with that same brush let's go ahead and scale it down so you can see it 
adds a little bit more uh, depth to it. So if I pan back, and you always want to check your work uh, from a distance and uh, make sure it's it's kind of uh, you know working from that distance or whatever. And I think it's a little bit too uh, harsh, so we can use two fingers, tap on that layer, and then scale back the opacity of that layer. So you know we can really kind of check the work. And I think just right about right there is pretty good and for what I'm looking for. And then also let's, uh, you, you know, you kind of want to make sure you don't add any particular effect to just one area. So let's get a little bit of that over here. So any of the similar material, uh, let's zoom in and, and see how that texture is working. So, but I also don't want it to be the same intensity all over the place. So I'm really trying to look at it and uh, add little bits here and there. But I still got a lot of painting to do. So I could really think of this more as underpainting. And I could just kind of do a light wash of it everywhere. But, uh, but I'm just kind of making sure that it's not too, uh, too much. But I, I think in the beginning, it's just really more important to get the stuff in there. Like you have... Um, it's just better to have texture built up to make the painting look so much better in the end. So you can kind of just play around with stuff in the very beginning and uh, add as much as you want, even overdo it because you you know there's so many opportunities to paint it back as you go. All right, so let's uh, again check the work, and I think that adds a bit more dynamic to it. So let's go ahead and merge that down. And then the other thing that I'll do, like you've noticed the progressions here, is I'll, after I get so far into it, I'll duplicate. And really, I haven't been on this layer that long, but I'll, I'll go ahead and duplicate it. And then now what I want to show you, and you can see I've actually made a large mistake right here. Let's get rid of that. So he's actually on a separate layer, if you notice, than the background. And the reason why is that allows me the opportunity to edit. Oh, these other ones are visible, so let's... It allows me to edit the edge work of the character, which I think is real important. Um, so I'll do that as I go as well. I'll just get in here and erase some of these edges and tighten up the edges as I go. So I've got this uh, dark spot through here. I can take the smudge brush. And, maybe, and I'll show you what brush I'm using there. So it's the round brush modified. I basically use a smudge brush almost like a, a fingertip effect where I'm pulling paint around. Uh, I need to get a few more brush settings going to where I get one that's just a really nice smooth blender. But I, I almost don't use the uh, smudge brush in that way. Uh, I do a little bit, but I'm not so much trying to blend it as I'm trying to move uh, color around and, and get various shapes going. That's the way I look at it anyways. I want to just get some of that shape out of there. Okay, so now what I want to I want to show you is a little bit more texturing. And again, I just really want to stress that underpainting that if you get enough uh, foundational colors uh, in there, you can refine over top of those and really tighten it up. So let's see. Let's try to tighten up uh, even the belt here, I guess, because it looks a bit too, uh, you know, not not refined or whatever so like with this area of the belt and you see I've got a little bit of texture going on and you can see I move things like the placement of the uh, the holes in the belt so I'm constantly moving stuff around because I I throw it in really quickly with a loose shape and then as I start to get the painting a little bit more fine I realize that you know this is isn't as large as it needs to be or maybe that bend so if you notice this top of the bend right there, let me pick another brush so I can show you what I'm talking about. I've got to get a cursor on this software. So let's take a color you can see, brighter color. And so maybe this bend is, is too curved down. I mean, it's not real bad, but it's definitely not as tight. It doesn't look like it's got a hard edge like a belt would. Uh, so I need to refine that a bit. And a lot of times the way that I do that is I grab the neighboring color and just kind of tighten it up that way. So I'll bring this color back over. Maybe I want to get rid of this shadow, so I'll grab that color, select, and I'll tighten up that edge by bringing that color over. I want this bezel on the, the belt edge to be a, 
a lot thinner so I'll bring that color over so that's really all all I'm doing to move things around is grabbing the neighboring color and adjusting it that way so if I want this edge to be taller you know, I can grab whatever color here really I want to get that keep in mind that you you tap and hold on the screen and just slowly move around to get just the right tone you're looking for then release and then another helpful thing even though you got a pretty good color palette with any painting you're doing you can go right over to here and just tap on these little boxes and save your colors alright so I want to get a little bit harder edge to some of this so if you notice I'm just using a pencil right now just to tighten up some of the edge work and then I'll go back to that soft round brush to to blend or to paint through and I also want I'm worrying about the edge right now, but then I'm going to move to trying to get more texture in here. And I want to drop shadow from here, so I'll select this dark. Get a little drop shadow. This actually looks like it's a bit too high, but... There's a shadow on each side. And as far as alignment goes, you could draw and hold this and I get a straight line by holding on the screen. And I can use that as a reference to see that this is uh, skewed, which I can see that visually, but just wanted to kind of check the work. So I'll try to move this around and get this placed. like that and an obvious cheat let me see if it'll work here I do this more in other programs where there's a lot of options for this type of stuff but let's just go ahead and see if I can make it work here so I draw out a selection always tap and finish the selection uh, by hitting the start point uh, three finger swipe down on the screen and then copy and paste and then drag the control point here straight down and it's a lot quicker way to kind of get a mirrored version of it and you may have to still finagle it a bit you know maybe a slight tilt or whatever but this will just be a quicker way to kind of get that in place you can see how skewed it was um, and that'll be something that will be noticeable so I don't want that in there so I'll go ahead and merge that down and now it's a little bit easier I can just focus on the the highlights now so I can bring this back to a lot brighter white let's go to paintbrush and let's scale the brush down and paint in some of the highlights we can make it real thin and just do a tiny little highlight through the middle to make it look more um, more chrome like and even this piece here needs to be down a bit now little tip for that like when you want to move something down if you just kind of think about you know I'm gonna place this down a bit further so really I could grab everything through the middle but I guess this this hole is a bit higher anyways so if I grab that and I move it down I'm gonna need just a little bit of bleed of that next color to cover up what I might expose by doing a copy paste so what I mean by that is if I take my selection tool and I draw around it and I really could go to the straight bottom edge of this I want to go a little bit above it to compensate for the area that I'm going to be moving. So now I have three finger swipe, copy, paste, and now when I move this down ever so slightly, hopefully, uh, see if I go too far I'll expose that other area and it's not a big deal, you can just paint through it, but I can, if I think about that previous to what I'm doing, I can compensate for that. 
Now likewise, another neat little feature in this program, if you tap your finger on the side of any direction of this selection, it'll move in that direction. So that's good if you're having a hard time moving it around and getting it just right. You can get it in the neighborhood and then just tap a few times and it'll literally move in that, uh, that direction uh, ever so slightly. I'm probably being a little bit too critical at this point, but yeah, see, so I just move that down just like that, merge down, and then pan back to kind of check the work. Yeah, and from back here, it looks like a buckle. I've got a weird little highlight in there I got to get rid of. Um, and actually, that needs to be the green showing through. So I can hold my finger over here, paint that in there. You know, it's 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 a lot quicker of a process when I'm just working, obviously. But as I explain it, it tends to slow down. Uh, and I'm still I still consider myself relatively new to this program, but I'm not new to digital painting. I've been doing this quite a quite a bit now. Um, but yeah, it's it's a great program to paint in. And you know, when people ask me, is this a total replacement to things like uh, Photoshop and Manga Studio, uh, I still say no to that. But it's it's really close, and it's it's all dependent upon how you use it. And I'd say it's very very possible for you to replace it. I don't say that in my particular workflow because of the way that I work, and I'm still used to using my other full blown programs to do uh, a lot of what I do. But if you had to make it work, by all means, this you could definitely make it work. It's it's a fantastic uh, setup, and I am using the Apple Pencil, just so you know. Okay, so now I can get back in here with some of these highlight colors, and you know keep working on the edge work and tighten it up little by little. Uh, so let's go ahead and add some texture into this belt a little bit more. It needs uh, a bit more texture to look realistic. Now I could get in here. And with the brush turned down pretty soft, I could just get in here and draw in a lot of this texture. There's no reason you can't. In fact, I would actually recommend that after you do an, a lot of your underpainting, that more of your finalized work is all kind of hand done over top. It'll give you a really nice effect. It'll look all hand painted. Um, but in the very beginning stage of the painting, I would recommend just... Uh, you know, using brushes with some texture, building up that way, uh, even photo bashing if you have to. I don't do much of that, but there's nothing wrong with it. It just makes sense to get as many of those uh, foundational textures and colors in there as you can, uh, and then finishing off with your own your own hand painting. At least that's the way that I uh, I try to do the work. So here I want some randomized edges. I'll just get in there and kind of stagger it around. And I think this even needs to be a little bit lighter. I'll just punch back the opacity. I just want this edge to look a little bit more weathered. Uh, I even notice there's just tiny bits of the lighter color around the edges of the, the openings here, the material. Again, just staggering the brush around to make it look a bit weathered. So instead of just drawing a perfect circle around it, which would look uh, almost silly, um, just try to bounce around and picture the material being uh, being rigid and flawed and whatever. Okay, and then let's pan back. So what I want to see here is a little bit more texture, but I want I want it to be a little bit more of the specular. Uh, highlights that you get in this type of material. So let's go ahead and add a layer. Let's set that to, I'm going to try screen. I, I recommend always playing around with these various uh, blending modes as you're doing this. So let's pick something a bit lighter. Let's pick something a little bit textured. And let's see what we get here. And I don't like what it's doing over the hole obviously, but I'll, I'll be able to fix that. Uh, still not the texture I'm looking for though, so let's try something else. Let's try... Uh, even this halftone brush is kind of neat. Let's try that. Mm, no, that's that's good for a foundational texture, but that's still not what I'm looking for. Uh, let's get in here. and I've, I really got to jump in here and make uh, more brushes for this program. Let's try Driven Snow, but real small. Right, that's a bit closer. It needs to be a little bit tighter together. 
and actually quite a bit tighter together. And remember, I still have the ability to soften it up with the opacity uh, or soft erase it back, but that's still not what I'm looking for. So this is where really figuring out uh, what your brush will what your brushes will do, and uh, you know studying the textures. That's a bit closer right there, and I might even be able to go with that one. But let me try one more before I settle on that brush. Uh, kind of like the spatter brush here. Yeah, that's probably the closest to what I'm looking for. Uh, still not as intense as I need it to be. Let me bump this up a bit more. Uh, double tapping on the screen to, to undo, or you can go to this little icon to your bottom right. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and brush this in stronger. So this is the other beauty of using layers, that I can paint this in more heavily and erase back. Let's go ahead and do that. And I'm actually going to, since I'm here, I'm going to apply this. I'm not liking that larger series of spatters, though. Well, you know what? I'm just going to go with it for now. I can always uh, paint it back further. So let me scale the brush down a little bit more. Again, I just want this little bit of texture and highlight on the material. If you notice, a lot of these areas aren't painted in enough for this to take effect actually still looks pretty decent right there but uh, I needed more underpainting to these areas so I'm just gonna stick with it up here for now and so now I can take this I can play with the blending mode uh, set it to add color dodge that's actually kind of neat but that's not what I'm looking for I would say add is probably the closest and then let's go ahead and erase uh, inside the holes here because I don't want texture in there and I don't want any texture on the buckle really. And I want to erase back the highlighted texture into the shadows. So I don't want that to be as noticeable there. And then now let me pan back because uh, you know the other drawback is you're not going to be zoomed into your work like that. The viewer is definitely not going to see it that way. So let's uh, check the work from back here. Let's tone back our erase brush. To something soft like this and let's just and it needs to be large enough to pass over it all at once and let's just softly erase that back and this is again the other thing that I think is really powerful about working with layers is being able to make adjustments like this really quickly and then checking the work like this uh, I could also obviously double tap on the layer and pump back the opacity like that a little bit quicker and zoom in and check the work so it still needs to be tightened up the belt itself isn't um, as nice as I would like it yet but that's in the right direction so I'm gonna go ahead and tap this I'm gonna merge it down I'm gonna add one more layer tap again set to darken multiply and while I'm here I'm gonna take the kind of a darker brown um, yeah, almost to black, but uh, with multiply, the dark brown will appear to be pretty much black on here. And then let's go ahead and take the same brush. And while we're here, let's just get a little bit more of that texture in there. And this time I'm concentrating a bit more on what the texture looks like in the shadows. And, you know, just really repeating this process will enrich your painting. It'll, it'll make it appear to look more uh, realistic and well thought out. And you just really just keep playing with it, repeating this process, and trying to find depth where you can, studying your reference, and uh, experimenting really is, is probably the uh, main ingredient to this uh, process. And then again, we don't want to be too, uh, too engrossed in it, too up close the entire time, so I need to pan back. So we get a little bit more, I'm just trying to get these edges to look a little bit nicer. This area here would generally be more in shadow. Um, and then also, I'm going to switch to now a soft brush. Where are you? Here, brushing. Soft brush. I actually prefer this one. Scale it up. And while we're here, 
I'm just going to go ahead and use this as an opportunity to round out the character a bit further. So taking cues from my uh, 3D reference and just kind of seeing and maybe darken this whole area together, darken the sides to make the uh, you know the character round out um, visually or whatever. So darken all these areas, and I'm not worrying too much about going over the existing painting to the background, uh, even though later on I'll probably have to go around the edge and clean it up because of that. Uh, but for right now, I'm just just more focused on getting the uh, foundation going and all the things that I need to uh, keep progressing through. So you see I'm bouncing around too. I'm not just tracing around the object. Um, you got to mix it up a little bit and sometimes uh, tracing around it can be okay, but I think it's more important to not do it too much. I actually did like it right on the arm there though. Kind of uh, pulls all that together. All right, let's move it over to here, check the work. Yeah, see, and it just, it just keeps pushing it in a, uh, a forward direction. So if I was to put the other one behind it, toggle it back, see there's a few of the changes right there, and you can watch the work start to tighten up. And that's really the whole process, or you know, there's a lot of little details into what I do, but that's predominantly uh, how I work up the painting. And let's see if there's anything else I can explain. Um, so past that, let me let me approach just one little aspect here of the leather. So with the arm here, again, I'll add a new layer. I'll set this to add. So I'll work on the highlights first this time. I'll grab my uh, paintbrush. And let's pick... Well, let's just use the lighter color inside the leather here again. So hold on that, select that color. And again, I could get to that by going here. And let's go ahead and work on the highlights of the leather in a bit more detail. So one of the things I notice here with the seams, uh, you know, everything's just really a highlight and a shadow, highlight and a shadow, just a repetitive way in which that happens. Um, you know, obviously with color, texture all involved and things like that. But one of the... The things that I always notice when doing this is that, you know, for these bends in the leather, you have this larger uh, shape, these rounded shapes for the highlight. And then the the drop shadow they create on the other side. So it's really kind of simple, but it's, it's getting it just right. And then you've got these seams that come through, and I always think of these almost like veins. Uh, like, so when you're doing an arm muscle, uh, it's kind of the same concept. Uh, and they provide this really cool dynamic because they highlight in the um, the areas where they bend up and, and they shadow or the areas where they bend down and it's just getting that just right that makes this look uh, like leather or a shaded arm or whatever you're working on but it's kind of these uh, shapes that they form that it, that's the tricky part for everybody uh, myself included obviously but um, you know, so it's getting those shapes in there, just the right amount of roundedness, uh, just the right amount of light that, you know, even like this I'm picturing as the receded area of the leather, but a little bit of light makes its way to the, the middle part. So it's getting a little bit of that in there. It, it's all about the subtleties, because a lot of times what I'll see people do, and what I find myself doing at times, is just going for the large basic shapes like this. And thinking because that's in there it'll work and that's not how it works it it'll that's the the underlying shapes that you're looking for but then it's the subtlety in which you make them work so as I get not liking this uh, shape right here let's try to fix that so I'll take the blending brush and kind of move this paint around and actually it's the underlying part that's bothering me so let me merge this down let's go ahead and move some of this around and you see I already started to paint some texture in there too. So anytime you blend, you're going to wash away some of that texture. So you got to be real careful. Uh, that's why a lot of painters, I think, uh, after they get uh, a bit of confidence with this, they tend to blend a lot less uh, and utilize um, painting over as a, as a better method because 
you don't wash away a lot of your texture and you're still able to keep layers down to a minimal. Okay, let's let's try to contrast this and bring some shadow in there. So add a layer, click that. Oh, sorry, click this. And darken, multiply. And let's go ahead and grab one of the darker reddish browns. And now let's try to get a little bit more depth. by painting the shadow on the on the underneath side of each one of these bends. And I always feel like with uh, painting like this that there's really no right or wrong way. I always say that. And then also that if you're afraid of, of uh, making a mark or you're afraid of if it's the right mark that you're making, uh, just go ahead and make it anyways, and you'll, you know, work through the process. It, if you're always creating marks, you're, in my opinion, you're you're moving in the right direction. It's the part where you stop and you analyze too much, and you just you become you almost freeze and say, uh, is this working out or something, and you start second guessing your work. That's the part you want to eliminate. Uh, and again, that's just my opinion, but it's it's one of the things what I utilize mentally to do the work. I feel like if I'm always making marks, I'm gonna I'm gonna figure something out about it, and I'm gonna make the right decision somewhere. So it's better that I just keep making decisions. All right. So um, the other thing is obviously you know check it from a distance. And it's starting to look like leather. It's not as nearly as impressive as the the three D. Uh, you know study that I'm looking at um, but at the same time it's I'm getting some of that information in there and I'm figuring out and I'm learning about the shapes that uh, uh, the shapes and the color shift uh, that are evident in, in leather okay so I think I need a little bit less red in there so I bring that over to more of a black on this way and I'm gonna scale this up I'm set to multiply I want to darken this a bit. Notice I'm, I'm actually painting over everything right now just very softly because I'm trying to build in a little bit more texture so the more that you overlap the brush strokes even very lightly you're, you're building texture. Uh, it doesn't necessarily have to always be a very defined texture brush to do that. And if I was to bear down really hard, I'd get something like that. I'm just lightly pushing some of these shapes back, I guess is the way I'm thinking about it. So that I can hopefully see into it a bit better and uh, make some other decisions. Okay, so let's go ahead and do this. Let's go ahead and merge this down. So tap on it once, merge down. Now I'm going to paint with normal mode right over top. And I want to try to get some of these shapes in place a little bit better. So I'm not going to worry about using a separate layer. Uh, and I just want to try to find these shapes that I'm missing in here. So I'm just pressing real lightly. And I could obviously control the opacity a bit further if need be. Just trying to get a few more of these bends. All right, let me pick a little bit lighter tone, or a lot lighter tone, I should say, and with a touch of blue in there. Much though, and let's try to get some of these highlights to, to jump a little bit more with that. So, this will should make the material look a bit more specular. 
I'm going to turn the brush down so I can apply a little bit more pressure. So I'll just start on the highest points of this just to kind of check it, make sure it's not too much. Okay, so now what I want to do is turn this brush way down, get a little bit more on this uh, this bead. So I'm basically trying to just pick little bits and pieces of it. Not, uh, you know, and keep in mind you can go a bit over the top and then paint back. Uh, actually, I don't know. I think that's really the way to do it a lot of ways because if not, you'll be too scared to slowly work up to something. But with painting, you can always paint back the information, and a lot of times that added texture will provide some pretty cool effects. So it's probably better to overdo it, uh, better than underdoing it in some situations. So I'm just trying to get this edging to be a little bit more evident. And let's go ahead and go a bit larger with this brush and get a little bit of highlights into the side. Alright, and let's select the dark again. And we get a little bit more detail in this uh, leather bead seam or whatever it is and it's a little bit more like a, a darker edge on each side get that in place And it's starting to get there. So now let's go ahead and toggle that on and off with the other layer behind it. Yeah, so you can see it's tightened up a lot. Um, still has a ways to go to be correct, but it's getting there. And that's really it. That's just the entire process that I'll take. Um, so, you know, in this particular uh, video episode, whatever, uh, mainly focusing on using blending modes and layers to slowly build up your painting. Um, what else did we pretty much cover? Um, using texture brushes, again with the blending modes, but you know, not being afraid to apply textures, uh, not being afraid to apply textures by hand as well, but using texture brushes to you know, get effects like this. So if you notice this area right in here has a pretty uh, enriched effect it still needs a, a little bit more like uh, one of the things I do after I get enough texture in place is I'll add another layer set to add or screen but I'm pretty sure add and now I can put this to a soft brush and it's gonna it's gonna pull from that texture that's already there so I can get in here and go okay where's this this highlight a little bit stronger on this material and if you notice it's not it's not washing away that texture, it's using it. So again, I can do this a little bit stronger at first, and it doesn't need to be a soft brush, but I'll just start with this. And I can go through here and add some of these highlights of the material. Um, probably need to do a little bit more paint work before I do this stage, but this is kind of like the final touches that I'll do. And again, I can play with the opacity of it and just slowly work up to that. I can check it and make sure if it's in a forward momentum and just keep working up from there so I'll add that later but so yeah so hopefully this video has shown you a thing or two hopefully it's been beneficial for you if it has be sure to like uh, subscribe and share all that jazz helps me keep uh, producing the work that I do here and let me know what videos you'd like to see in the future uh, it always helps me to uh, know when I'm making my next vid what's important for you guys so I thank you very much for tuning in and watching. Keep drawing, keep painting, and keep having fun, and I will talk to you soon.